hello and welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to learn about how we can use the graph apis inside canvas app without having any custom connectors but before we move to the video here is a short intro the first thing what we want to do is we want to go and create a new document library so let me just go to the site content and then click on this new button and select the document library and provide a name to this document library as my documents and hit create so this will create a blank document library which is has a name as my documents let me try to upload one file into this document library so let me just go to upload and click on file and select any of one file from the desktop let's say i select this studio.mp4 so as you can see that file is being uploaded uploading yes it is uploaded now and what i can do is i can just go and select it and try to change some of the properties of this uploaded video uh, let's say i call it taste studio 1.mp4 and title would also be taste 1.mp4 as you can see i can put that right here the next thing what we want to do so after successfully creating these the document library which is called as my document what we are going to do is we are going to create a new out of the box sharepoint app based on that document library and, and to do that what we are going to do is click on this share point and then we are going to create a new connection if the connection is already been established you can use that i have that already established so i'm going to click on this and then select my data to site as you can see here are all the lists are displayed but not my document library so to connect to the document library what we can do is we can just go and simply Write, write down that document library's name. In my case, that's my document and click connect. If the name provided is proper, then it will go and connect to that document library and create three page Power Automate, app, uh, sorry, Power App, Canvas app. So if I run this app, as you can see, I have one record that is Taste Video 1, which is already available. I can edit the item name. As you can see, I can edit that name from taste video one to taste video, and the changes will be reflected. Okay, and even I can go and add some more fields to be displayed here. For example, I want to display, uh, let's say, a name and version number of my document that I can do from here. So this is fully fledged working application which is created up from from that document library. So the next thing what we want to do is we want to upload the documents from our from our power app. But as you can see, when I type in the upload or browse in this control bar, it is not providing me any controls because the document libraries for the document libraries, the power app does not have that control. To have that, what we have to do is we have to connect to the SharePoint using the SharePoint connector to any of our custom list. So I'm connecting my data to site and selecting any of the list, for example, flooring estimates. So now my list has been connected, which is a flooring estimate as my data data. What I will do, I will add a new blank screen. And in this blank screen, I'm going to add edit form. And my data source for this edit form will be uh, that new flooring estimates. So let me just go and select it from from here from the data source so not here yeah in the data source i can select the flooring estimate so what it will do is the the custom list in this airports by default has that attachments control so list or uh, attachments fields actually so it will have this attachment control in it so the next thing what i want to do is just go into the attachment data card and copy this data card for attachments and and add it into the new screen so now i have my attachment files control we want to get rid of these errors so what we'll do just edit this control remove the errors which are already there by clicking multiple times into that error control as you can see here 
right now our control is ready if i run this okay uh, let me just try to run this as you can see we have fully functional out of the box power apps control which can be used to upload or select the file from the app okay so the next thing what i want to do is utilize this control to upload files to my uh, document library which we just created to do that what we will do is <clears throat> first of all let me delete that screen which is now not needed let me just go and clear out all the references for that uh, screen so now my control is ready to be used what i will do is i will just go and copy this control yes just right click and cut or copy i can cut it as well and put it here inside the browse gallery or my browse gallery control let me just minimize this and now let me put that control in here yes that is okay i can i can put it from here as well so yeah that's it let me just put it here and what the other thing i i want to do is i will put one button let me just go and just arrange this a little bit the next thing i'm going to do is just let me just go and <clears throat> let me just go and create new screen and add that browse or upload file button here. Oops, I have two buttons now. Let me just delete one. And the next thing I'm going to do is I will go and put one button and name it as upload. Okay, upload files. So what we want to do is when I click on this upload file, we want to upload whatever things has been selected into this upload control to our document library. To do that, we are going to use Graph API. So let me just go and search for the new connector which is available to achieve this, which is called as Office 365 Group Connect. So when I click on this, the Office 365 Groups is the connector which can have a new thing which is uh, which can be used to send an HTTP request. So if I can just scroll down and yes, here send an HTTP. So when I click on this, as you can see, we can use this as send an HTTP request to send a Microsoft Graph API REST API calls, and we are going to utilize this Graph API calls for that. If I go and open the Graph Explorer. Uh, the Graph Explorer is, you can say, a playground to understand how we can use the Graph API in terms of the Graph Explorer. Right now, I am logged in with my user. And if I hit me, it will provide all of the details of myself from this, my developer account, my name, what is my given name, what is my job title, and all those If I search for SharePoint, and under this SharePoint, uh, not this one, but actually under the SharePoint beta, which are the, in the beta version or the SharePoint uh, sites section. There are different uh, API calls available. For example, one of them is get SharePoint sites based on the relative path. So I'm going to utilize that. And the host name in this particular case will be my, so let me open this site first. The host name would be my domain name which will be day1986.sharepoint.com let me just copy it and put it in at the place of host name then colon the second thing is server related url so my server related url is site slash delta taste so i will replace it as you can see in here and if i run the query now it will provide me the id of my delta taste site so the second parameter after the comma is my ID of site. So let me just open a notepad and capture this. So let's say site ID is this one. The next thing we would, which we want to do is we want to get the document library which we have as its ID. So to use that, we can use this enumerate the document libraries under the root. So in the root, we, we uh, uh, the drives in this graph API are the document yeah. Right, so the site is going to be the site ID. So we can use instead of root, we can provide our site's ID. And what it will do, it will provide all the document libraries or libraries or lists available inside this site. So if I search for my documents, 
it will provide me the details for my documents document library and this is my document library's id so the next thing let me just go and paste it here in the notepad as well so doclib id is this that space there. so the next thing what we want to do is just go and provide that document library id just copy it and paste it after this drives letter so that will be my drive id in the case of document library id so as you can see it will provide me the data according to this particular document library okay so the next thing what we want to do in this case is, so the next thing what we want to do is just uh, want to upload some of the data into this document library so to do that what we can utilize is that office 365 group connector so if we can go and have a look into that office 365 group connector there is one more uh, graph rest api to upload any files so if you go and check for the microsoft graph rest api for the upload we can generate our rest api call in in such a way so that where a site id is the site's id a drive is our document library's id and then we can have the items right so right now we are at the document library state and then we can write slash root so that we want to upload it to the particular doc, uh, root of the document library if you want to upload it to let's say a folder we can also provide a folder in that so there is an example also available for that if i can scroll a little bit down as you can see if to upload a new file i can construct my url in this way where i have the folder then txt that it's content so the next thing what i can do is after the root i can put a colon and copy this whole api url and head back to the our power apps and Next thing what we want to do is go to the data section and under the add data we will search for the office 365 groups click on connect to connect to this office 365 groups connector once that is done it will be available under our data the next thing what we want to do is when a user clicks on this upload files we want to utilize this office 365 groups dot http request method which is x which is accepting a url which needs to be called let me just put a file name as static for now we are going to make it dynamic just in a moment and then write colon slash content get a content for that file the next thing it's asking is a method we are going to use a put method call this http request and the third parameter is actually a file so to capture a file for this uh, we are going to use that attachments control which we have let me just rename this data card to something else uh, let's say i should rename it to attachments so what we are going to do is when this button is clicked we are going to use those attachments which are available under that attachment control so we are going to choose the for all function to look through all the attachments and we are going to provide attachments dot attachments in here and the next thing what we are going to do is uh, here for the file itself we are going to use this record dot value and closing the parentheses closing the for all functions parentheses as well and instead of this file name we are going to use this record dot name so let me just add that this record dot name uh, and to do that we have to use that record dot name we are going to use it and let me just format the, there is one error in here instead of plus it should be an ampersand sign in both of the places so let me just go and correct it let me try to format the text one more time and i guess we have our code ready so the next thing what i want to do is let's say i have one item in my document library let me just go and delete this item let's make it blank let's go and run this app let me click on the attach file and let's select this 
these two values from the downloads this one study site example and another one will be like the CSV. and once i click on this upload files it will do a graph api call in the back end and if i go and navigate to my data test site and a data test site my documents library i can see these two documents are here great now our app is our button is working properly and it is adding that files to my document library so this is how we can utilize the graph api's calls using the office 365 groups connector inside the power app this is only one example of uploading the files to the document library whatever day, whatever graph api calls we can use inside the graph explorer or utilize the graph api calls we can we can perform those operations under the power apps canvas app as well i hope you like this video if you like the video please like share or provide your comments inside the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please do so so that you can have latest uploads whatever i am doing or uploading from my side thank you so much for watching the video see you in the next one bye bye